Hello and welcome back to my magic world of Zine. So today we'll be finishing the very last bit of what remains to finish World of Zine and move on to the extra things. So, of course, first of all I want to go forward and ready the jump. Because we'll be doing a lot of that. Okay. Now, let's see if I can remember this. Jump here, jump there, move here, jump here, jump here, I think jump there. Yes, I think we got that. What is my name? Well, the letters there spell Red pick. No. <laughs> Actually, that's Picard. Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Correct, come on up. Say, do you have tea? Earl Grey, hot? Throne of Legends. Uh, they're saying no. Um, um, legends. I think you can sit here if you are a legendary person. Let's try it. Okay. You can't sit there. There's no real reason to. Okay, well... Let's, uh... Let's explore further. Yeah, let's start from here, why not? Ooh, books. Book, we'll read. The book seems to be an account of one of Picard's favorite adventures. He opened the book to a random page and began reading. Bruno cut through yet another insane beggar with his massive broadsword. As I was saying, this town is great. Just look at this place. An excellent trainer, a bank, a... Excuse me. Two more beggars had approached Bruno and company with a horrible disease, interrupting Bruno's conversation and slowing his stride. The swords flashed twice, and two more beggars went down. Nowhere was I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been to a place with beggars. Also, it's, again, incorrectly written there. The book seems to be an account of one of Picard's favorite adventures. You open the book to a random page and begin reading. And Copleus loosened his, sword sh his short sword in its scabbard. It looked like yet another fight with the hated mad fools. Bagas, the party sorcerer, began to tremble with fright. The first of the fools, the mad ones, stepped forward to receive an Copleus sword in the gut. The second followed the first, none the wiser from witnessing the fate of his fellow. All right. Oh, another sarcophagus. Hmm. Do I want to open these? Maybe. Phase money. That's uh, something new. Mm hmm. Phase money. 500,000 experience, 500 hit points, 35 AC, 175 speed, 1 attack for 200 to 1,200 points of physical damage. No range attack. Phase mummies live in the Southern Sphinx. They're resistant to all damage but fire, and their touch drains spell points. Though powerful, phase mummies usually stay in their sarcophagi unless disturbed. Okay, so nothing too special about this, I guess. Wait, really? There's nothing? Hmm. 
Alright. Oh, there's another throne. So you've come to me for the chime of opening. What could you possibly offer me in exchange? I've been around for thousands of years and I've seen everything. Well, almost everything. There is one mysterious item that I haven't seen. It's called a widget. It's a hypothetical item whose existence has never been proven. Have you ever heard of it? We have done better than just hear of it. That's the quest reward for finding the lava rock. Really? Do you have one? Indeed I do, Captain. Would you like to trade it for the chime of opening? Certainly, I don't have any use of that. Then, make it so. Make it so. Make, make it so. Make, 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 make it so. Yes. Nice to see you again, adventurers. The widget that you brought to me is fascinating. Intriguing. Star Trek The Next Generation. Okay, so let's just continue exploring to the side here. Another sarcophagus. It doesn't look like there is much point in opening those. But hey. Doesn't curse you either, so that's good enough. Another book. This book has been hollowed out and used to store old cigars. The book seems to be an account of one of Picard's favorite adventures. He opened the book to a random page and began reading. And then the Princess Sheila, editor's note, the following text has been excised for the moral health of our loyal players. <laughs> okay. And the last sarcophagus. Nothing here either. Alright, so that is everything here. So let's just Lloyd's Beacon out. So now that we have the thing of opening... Well, one thing I want to check out actually is... Um, what the uh, Dragon Pharaoh has to say. Maybe nothing new. But let's go to... Um, yeah, let's go to... Castle View. And then... Go up there. As soon as I can recast this. Good thing I didn't go up, or else I would have fallen out right away. Okay, there. Oh, sorcery. There we go. Now, where was the. portal to the. Uh, To Olympus. Oh, the chosen one. Oh, the chosen ones. So, do you have anything to say for yourself? <laughs> The opportunity to complete the destiny of Zine will not be around forever. It is important for you to turn the machines on, awaken the sleepers, and open the way to the cloud world above Darkstone Tower. These tasks are all that I shall ever ask of you again. Think of the fame and the adulation of millions you will earn. So you don't have anything to say for yourself. Can I actually open this now? I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Yes, I can. 
book. Who will read? Uh, the book is blank, but for a single page in the middle that reads Prime Directive, Obey the Ancients. Secondary Directive, Protect Zine. Tertiary Directive, Complete the Destiny of Zine. One million experience. So, as you can see, uh, the Dragon Pharaoh here is also a guardian, and probably not really, uh, um, not entirely a dragon, but rather a dragon android. So, obey the ancients, protect Zine, complete the destiny of Zine, yeah. Basically the same thing as, uh, As for Shelton. Except he didn't go haywire yet. <laughs> Alright, well, let's just go back. Lloyd's Beacon. Back to Castleview. Got a pass? Okay, go ahead. Back to the light side. And... Finally, what I want to do is actually to go... down here. This is the start of the extra stuff. So let's cast Day of Protection just to make certain that we are ready for that. And now this place. You have the proper stone. I'll open the door. Go ahead. It is not the right place. Stone. I'll open the door. Go ahead. Okay, now we're on the dark side again. Crossword puzzle. Dungeon of Death, level one. So this place, this place, is actually. Why I'm calling it an extra thing? Well, for one thing, there's nothing here. You don't need to finish this place to win the game. It's entirely optional. And second of all, it's basically a ROM hack dungeon. Or a fan mod dungeon, or whatever. It's real wacky. It's not something that you would normally see in the game. It's a bit creative, of course, for that, but, uh, yeah, it, yeah, well, you'll see. <laughs> so first of all, we have the crossword puzzle. The World of Zine on 30 Gold a Day by Eerie the Cartographer. Introduction. There is much to see in the World of Zine. To give a complete description of all the wonders to be sampled in the eight corners of the world is beyond the scope of this work. In these pages, I shall dispense a broad overview of the highlights that should be visited for a traveler to gain a working knowledge and appreciation of the magnificent land that is Zine. This work is arranged as a simple description of my travels. A traveler wishing to follow my footsteps should expect to spend around 30 gold pieces per day on living expenses. The traveler should be careful to arm himself well with magic weapons and some sort of emergency teleportation device. Zine, while beautiful, can be deadly. My journey began on the dark side in Castleview Town. Armed with little more than a leprechaun of flamberge and an orb of insect repellent, 
I set out for the town of Necropolis to see for myself whether the legendary city of the undead truly existed or was merely a fable. The trip took me over the mountains that lie to the north of Castleview and through the forbidding central desert. Why did you go through the desert? You just need to climb the mountains. Whatever. My experience as a mountaineer and navigator saw me pass these formidable obstacles. Necropolis was everything I had hoped it would be. The undead were everywhere. Zombies, skeletons, a mummy, even a vampire visiting from Castle Blackfang. I hear that Queen Calindra was kidnapped by Elamar and turned over to the vampires of Blackfang. If the Traveler is worried about hostility on the part of the undead, remember that they are people too. The undead are just as friendly as the living, possibly more so. Simple politeness will prevent misunderstandings from becoming lethal encounters with the forces of hell. Yeah, I don't know, they were pretty hostile last we were there. And last they were there too. <laughs> um, yeah, he didn't mention the delicious either. After a brief but pleasant stay in Necropolis, I crossed the mountains north of the city by way of the Griffin Pass. Avoiding Castle Alamar and hugging the edge of the mountains, I headed east until I came to Lakeside Town. And that's uh, across the whole world. A quaint vacation spot, Lakeside will refresh your spirit and revitalize your body. Though much of the population of Lakeside is involved in the witchcraft industry, have no fear. The witches only turn children into goblins. As long as you leave the kids behind, you'll have no problem at all with these charming and fun-loving ladies. I stayed in Lakeside for a few months before leaving. Before I left, I purchased a riding beast to speed my journey. A lone road connects Lakeside to the rest of the civilized world, and I set off down that road to find Sandcaster. Sandcaster is a bustling city of commerce and, per and trade. Though the townspeople are mostly humans, elves, gnomes, and dwarves, the city still has something to entertain the thrill-seeking traveler. Sorceresses and wizards feed upon the helpless citizenry like fleas on a dog. Criminals from all walks of life wander the streets with impunity, free to use might or spells to rob from the innocent. Hmm. All in all, a lively town, though lacking in the kind of high-quality entertainment places like Necropolis and Lakeside can serve up. Quickly growing bored of the nightlife in Sandcaster, I once again set up on the road, this time traveling southeast in search of adventure. I found plenty. As I ventured into the dense forest near the southeast corner of the world, my riding beast disturbed a nest of snakes. Startled, the beast roared up, dumping me from the saddle. I rose to my feet and seized the beast's tether, pulling its bloated face toward mine so that we could discuss its error. Man to beast. I never got the chance. My pain spell was barely on my lips when an arrow appeared in the side of the beast. The beast roared and wrenched the tether from my grasp. Two more arrows streaked from the forest and struck home. The beast stumbled a few steps and collapsed to the ground. I glanced wildly about me and saw barbarian archers closing in on three sides. I dashed for the fourth. Also, barbarian archers are not in the forest, they're in the mountains, come on now. Branches and thorns tore at my clothes, scratched my skin, slowed my flight. The barbarians gained. Just as it seemed I could run no further, I came upon a clearing with one of the many travel pyramids in the center of it. Hope flared in my breast once again, and I redoubled my pace, reaching the pyramid as the barbarians burst from the forest. I activated the pyramid with the last of my strength. Again, there's no pyramid there, and all the pyramids except for the one in Castleview are destroyed. The pyramid whisked me away from my pursuers in the blink of an eye and a sparkle of energy. I found myself in the snow-covered hills near the town of Winterkill, a cursed and empty town of ghosts. Lonely Darkstone Tower was barely visible to the east. Fearful that the barbarians would soon find the courage to follow me through the portal, I set my sights on the hills to the north and began the weary trek 
through the snow. Many miles later, I happened upon a road. Knowing that the road would eventually take me to the town of Vertigo and Civilization, I followed the road east. The road paralleled the hills and led past one of the many dungeon entrances scattered about Zine. I must admit that curiosity got the better of me and I decided to explore this one dungeon. This was a mistake. The dungeon turned out to be the infamous Zine Arena. Yep, that is correct actually. The hills go right through the arena. I didn't figure it out until too late. The place was barren, except for a few piles of bones and a lone desk sitting in the center of a very large room. When I approached the desk, a large man appeared in the seat behind the desk and told me that since the place hadn't had any visitors in some while, that he would just start the fight without further delay. Then he vanished. As quickly as he vanished, monsters appeared. There was a gargoyle, a giant armadillo, which looked a little like a member of the swine family because of its snout, a pegasus, a minotaur, a giant vulture, a crusader, a sewer rat, a centipede, and some sort of giant iguana. Have at thee, cried the crusader, lowering his lance and urging his horse forward. The rest of the monsters simply advanced without comment, implacably hostile. Needless to say, I bravely charged toward the exit, only to find it blocked. The monsters followed. I sprinted for the desk. Coward! shouted the crusader, leading the pack. The desk was empty and unresponsive. Cursing, I ran some more, ducking and weaving behind ancient walls and crumbling pillars. With some clever maneuvering, I lost the monsters in the maze and leaned against the pillar to catch my breath. I could hear the iguana dragging its corpulent body nearby. The rest seemed further away. Looking down at my feet, I discovered one of the many corpses that littered the floor in the arena. Clutched in its bony hand was a ring of the elements and a wand of fireballs. No sooner seen than stolen. The iguana rounded the corner and stopped, belly heaving as though it were going to be sick. Its mouth opened slowly, dramatically, and then it belched forth a stream of acid. I covered my face with my hands, expecting the worst. Instead, the acid lightly singed my hair and clothes. The ring had saved me. The dragon blinked slowly at me, surprised that I was still alive. Dragon? The guans are not dragons. I mean, the... Komodo dragons are sort of like iguanas, but they're not exactly that. Well, anyway. Obviously not one of the brighter models. <laughs> I leveled the wand and fired off a withering blast of heat and smoke. The monster staggered, but remained standing. It went through its sick routine again and covered me with more acid. I fired the wand again. It covered me with acid. I fired. It fired. I fired. Finally, the dragon fell on its side and died. I have found you at last, shouted the crusader from behind me. Turn around and meet your fate like a man. I turned. The crusader was there, flanked on either side by the gargoyle and the minotaur. The rest of the monsters were right behind him. Seeing my chance, I fired into the horde again and again, emptying the wand. When the smoke cleared, nothing but a black spot on the arena floor remained of my enemies. That wasn't so bad, I said aloud, dusting off my clothes and straightening my collar. I walked to the desk. As expected, the arena master appeared. Congratulations on your awesome victory, he gushed. I'll send you to Vertigo now. Uh, don't I get a reward or something? No, goodbye. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good explanation of the arena in this game. Alright. The next moment I was in Vertigo, with only a hazy hard only a hazy heat distortion in the air to mark my sudden arrival. With the arena and my hasty arrival on... What? On the this side? Of the world? Oh. On this side of the world becoming a bad memory, my journey was almost over. I knew that there was a travel pyramid just outside of town. First thing, though, was to get a hot meal and a room for the night. The tavern was right behind me, so I stepped inside and asked for the special of the day. Octopus soup with arachnoid garnish. Hmm. 
Well, part of traveling is to try the local food, no matter how strange. The octopus was somewhat rubbery, and the arachnoid garnish tasted like chicken. Not bad, but both dishes could have used some more spice. After eating, I checked into the, a room and had a good night's sleep. The next day, I decided to explore Vertigo a while before I returned home to Castleview. Turns out that Vertigo has all the amenities of civilization, including a town mirror. Uh, the blacksmith's shop has everything an adventurer could ask for. Everything from accuracy tridents to venom crowns. Nova scepters were unavailable though, and the blacksmith had never even heard of a JVC moat maker. Is that some special item that's in the game and only obtainable through the portals or something? Hmm. I don't know. The guild, however, was virtually barren of spells. They didn't even have the clairvoyance and cure disease spells, let alone heavy hitters like Resurrection and Starburst. They seemed to mostly carry the simplest spells that rangers and druids used. The proprietor, an agile prestigitator in his mid-thirties, told me that the nearest known version of the clairvoyance spell was in the Witch's Tower, far to the south, where the Hone of Felicita the Unicorn was kept. Well, risking some unicorn's horn sounded both dangerous and unprofitable. The seer within me told me that the further adventures would give me a severe case of death, and that I should change my vocation to fisherman or alligator wrestler. <laughs> my decision had been made. I left the town and used the pyramid to return to Castleview. The travel guide is complete, but there is one more piece of advice I'd leave you to ponder. When the Sphinx has you baffled and Korak remains a prisoner, Tito their wolf, smile and all will be forgiven. The end. Um. Well, Korak isn't a prisoner anymore. Well, he never really was a prisoner. He was just stuck in stasis because he fell into the lava. The end. Okay, that was uh, quite a story. Okay, so the way this works, it's a crossword puzzle, of course. 75 down. Snake poison. Answer? Venom? Correct. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So essentially... By answering questions here, you get tiles cleared of water. And down means it goes down, and venom. One, two, three, four, five. But it's V E N O M. Okay, well, that's interesting. And I guess all the highlighted words there are actually exactly that. 39 across. Bones. Remains. Answer? Uh, something like corpse? Wrong. Has to be an O, and it's longer. Skeleton. Skeleton. Correct. Okay, let's see. What this crosses S K E. So the last is E here. Grotesque creature. Answer E. Mm. Gargoyle? Correct. Okay. Alright, this. Crosses quite a bit. Actually, can I reread? Yes, scroll reads gargoyle. That's very nice. So, this is A. Oh wow, this is huge. Three across. The sorcerer's favorite secondary skill. Uh, prestidigitation? Like 
Prestidigitator? Correct, okay. So that's why it's so long. So that's O and R, so that this means the second letter is O. 72 down, Gremlin. Gremlin. O. Goblin? Correct. Not exactly the same. So this is N. Thirty six across. Spell of perception. Clairvoyance. Yes. All right. Well, what is this? Nimble, quick, fast. Um. Uh, Okay, what's the this goblin? Gob L. Mm, L. Okay, and what is this? Gargoyle. G. Agile. Agile. Yes. Okay. Hmm. No, I cleared quite a bit of this. So, an interesting idea for a dungeon. Aquatic reptile. Iguana. Uh, dragon. Um, oh, alligator wrestler. Correct. Incantation spell. Oh, this is going pretty nicely, actually. <laughs> Myriapod centipede. All right. Yay for invertebrate zoology. <laughs> City of the Undead. Necropolis. Underground Jail. Dungeon. Correct. Half Lion, Half Eagle. Griffin. Cure for Eradication. Resurrection. Alright. But yeah, this place is actually hilariously huge, so I guess this is what we will be doing next time, completing the crossword puzzle. So see you all then. Later.